not yet into the lecture class. Alhamdulillah, yani I will add everyone. So I have um, about 30 people uh, here. You should be admitted by default automatically by the program or by the university. Uh, today, inshallah, I'm going to um, talk with you uh, with about major uh, things with which we should be concerned while reading Somerset Mom's uh, short story, which is called The Kite. I told you that this is in that uh, the story is enjoyable. It's one of the best that you can ever read because it has been written by uh, Somerset Mom, who, who is not only one of my favorite writers, actually, but he is uh, one of the best writers all over the whole world. I remember way back when I was uh, as young as uh, as you are, uh, I uh, heard Anis Mansour talking about uh, Somerset Mom with infatuation. He was very fond of him. And I guess he translated uh, a novel called The Razor's Edge by Summer Somerset Mom. And uh, my student Aisha had an MA in uh, Bursaid uh, Bursa University uh, on the works of um, uh, Somerset Mom as uh, someone uh, who helps uh, or who is interested actually in helping his characters achieve themselves and become better people in society, especially women. And in the PowerPoint presentation, uh, uh, I have only two slides, as you can see. Uh, two slides. The uh, slide uh, at the start uh, is the title page, and this one, how to approach the kite. Uh, and uh, uh, when you know, when you understand how to approach a text or a short story or a novel, uh, then you are on the safe side. You understand what is going on, and then you can read the story, which is in our book, about 30 pages. You can read it easily. You can concentrate on the most important things. Uh, the most important things in uh, the story uh, are these, but they are not the only important things. You have to be uh, uh, careful, you have to differentiate between importance of that you can also have. Uh, we can join the meeting. Uh, you can join the meeting. You cannot join the meeting. I've read this. So, um, so could you let us in? Okay. 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 Kings. Everyone admitted now. Hello, are you there, everyone? Goodness. All the طلب request. I'm uh, admitting everyone, but that, um, this will cut off from the time of the lecture and it will interrupt me. So if you can find another way uh, to do this, please do it. So uh, we're going to approach the story through these uh, dimensions or these tools or aspects, but uh, I'm repeating, you, know, you must pay attention to the fact that these are not the only things the, with which you can approach the story. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, we are interested again in uh, the Victorian age, in the fact that the story reflects uh, the literature of the age. But let us read uh, these things, psychoanalysis, narrative innovation, modernism, Victorian mannerism, subtlety of language and feminism. These are some, but they are not the only ones to be taken care of. Uh, psychoanalysis is uh, a big issue in uh, the works of uh, Somerset Mom. And for one thing, you have to understand that at the time he began writing short stories, uh, so psychoanalysis, automatically we have to understand that um, the writer and uh, his works, his short stories, are a reflection of an age in which uh, the theory of psychoanalysis was quite widespread, and not only widespread, but actually very influential among 
people and among writers and readers. What is psychoanalysis? It is for you to read. Uh, uh, you, you, you might have certain explanations in, in my textbook uh, and in your previous uh, uh, studies uh, in um, high school, at high school you uh, must have been taught about psychoanalysis and the fact that one's behavior now is only a reflection of one's behavior or of the things one learned when another thing is uh, freud and his stress on the two complexes the electra and the etubus complexes uh, and in this story uh, you have the child herbert uh, a male child being captivated uh, and controlled by his mother. To be captivated as a male child by your mother all the time, even as a grown up person, even as a married guy, you know, uh, to behave in the same way that your mother directs you or guides you or orders you. Uh, this is actually very uh, uh, strange and uh, it uh, uh, shows us. Hello? Okay, following? Dinia Oh, yeah. Okay, it shows how much uh, Freud uh, has been uh, so accurate in his analysis of the human character. Most uh, of uh, the manifestations of our behavior today uh, came from our childhood experiences. And if you go back uh, to um, short. Uh, Uh, a book by William Wordsworth, in which he talks about uh, uh, his um, childhood admiration of the rainbow while uh, in winter. And in the middle or at the end of the poem, he says, the child is father to the man or of the man. When he says, my heart lips when I behold a rainbow in the sky. Uh, so was it when my life began? So is it now I'm a man, so be it when I shall grow old or let me die. The child is father of the man. So this is the essence of psychoanalysis. What about, Tatran, I'm saying this in brief, and it is your job to read more and also to follow uh, uh, the specific lines at the beginning and at the end of almost all his stories in which he uh, expresses his debt to psychoanalysis, is being influenced by psychoanalysis. What about narrative uh, innovation? Uh, and this puts us in front of something uh, that I kept stressing all the time. Uh, is the man uh, just a Victorian writer? He isn't. He is Victorian and modernist at the same time. So it combines both the qualities of uh, Victorian writers and the qualities of modernist writers. Is he innovative? He is. Is he creative? He is. Is he parochial or dogmatic or classical or just early Victorian? No, he is much more than this. He was trying all the time to uh, renew and uh, uh, to uh, revive the art of uh, novel writing. Uh, and uh, this is what we're going to read today at the start of uh, the book when he talks about uh, uh, Hazlitt and Carlyle and Chekhov and the other contemporary writers who dominated the scene or uh, the literary scene and the stage at that time was dominated by certain uh, prose writers uh, who, <coughs> whom he admired for their individual skills but whom he uh, wanted to ameliorate. What is to ameliorate? It is to ameliorate is to uh, build on and to overtake, to do better than. Is he modernist? We could not say that he is 100% modernist and he is not 100% Victorian. He has uh, features of Victorianism and features of modernism. What, what are the major uh, features of modernism? Uh, as I said, it's liberty, it's uh, rebellion in a technique and in uh, content. The ideas that he chooses to, to the, the issues that he chooses to, to write about and the way 
in which, in which is uh, being new, and this is the essence of uh, modernism. Uh, he uh, doesn't prefer uh, to uh, imitate others or to repeat what others have been uh, saying, because this would be a cliche, of course. Uh, is he for or against Victorian mannerism? Uh, Victorian mannerism, as I explained in class, is different from Victorian manners. Anyone uh, with manners uh, is a, <clears throat> the image or the epitome of a good person who has manners, who is well behaved, who is sensible. But if you have mannerism, then this is almost the same, if, for the sake of simplicity, let me say, it's almost the same as uh, sentimentality. Uh, you are affecting emotion. You are not offering us genuine emotion or sincere emotion or natural spontaneous emotion. He was, of course, against this. He wanted spontaneity. Uh, and spontaneity, the uh, word that when, when we uh, uh, explained that in passing, uh, romanticism, and when we refer to the uh, definition of romanticism as the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility. Language with um, Somerset Moon takes on a different, more elaborate, more sophisticated, more challenging uh, uh, light and picture and nature. Uh, he is a man of innovation, a man of uh, extreme sensitivity to language. Uh, he perfects that. Uh, uh, and Uh, to write in the same manner. If you would like to, to do the same, you will fail off miserably. Uh, he is a really uh, challenging writer in terms of writing. In the fragments that we have in the book, or in the book, we can add some other things that he is comic. Uh, he is one of those writers who can uh, put a smile onto your face all the time. Is he for or against feminism? This is what we're going to uh, uh, see or to arrive at when we read the story together, inshallah. Right? Uh, الرسائل بتاعتكم شايفين أنا كل اللي طلب أصلاً دخلته في العمل إزاي؟ انصاف انت دلوقتي خلاص انت وروان ار يو ان ونوره اه يا دكتور خلاص امال بقى الرسائل اللي بتجيني دي الو اه يا دكتور احنا مع حضرتك تمام تمام خلاص اوكي uh, so uh, today I propose to uh, look at the first pages from, uh, um, say, page seven onwards. Uh, I, I, I think I went through it through these pages quickly in in one lecture. Uh, but again, if you if you look at uh, uh, page seven, uh, you have to ask yourself all these questions all the time. Uh, all right. Uh, as you can see, at the bottom of the page, uh, very much interesting between English and American writers. For him, American writers are the example. Why uh, does he find American writers to be uh, examples to be followed, uh, to be greater than the British ones? رغم إنه بيتكلم عن ناس زي في صفحة تسعة. زي هازلت وزي نيومان وزي طبعا كارلايل توماس كارلايل ده يعني حكايه في كتابه النسر في نهايه القرن ال19 وكذلك ويليام هازلت وغيره من الكتاب وثاكري والراجل اللي هو عمل ذا وومن ان وايت ويلكاي كولينز يعني جريت بروز رايترز جريت نوفلز كمان بس هي دازنت فايند هيم سيلف uh, 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 following in the footsteps of those writers. In Nama, he is a rebellious writer uh, who finds Americans better. In what way are they better? 
read into these pages to understand. They are better because they capture the essence of the short story. They capture the essence of the modern age. They capture the nature uh, of the end of the century. Uh, you know, like page eight, it will underline part. It has been an advantage to American writers, many of whom at one time or another have been reporters that their journalism has been written in a more transient, nervous, graphic English than ours. For we read the newspaper now as our ancestors read the Bible. So uh, I, I talked about this in civilization when I told you that uh, writers who began as journalists benefited a lot. Uh, but uh, it seems that uh, this habit has uh, stopped uh, according to Mom, Fabitelli, he finds American writers to be better ones because most of them worked as uh, reporters. Uh, Taman, don't forget to read the footnote uh, in which I say this is a beautiful way of saying that British novelists must liberate themselves. Obadi at the time the novel came into being, with journals were hackers. Uh, all this is explained in detail. Uh, if you jump to page uh, 10, uh, I have always liked to let things simmer in my mind, in my mind, for a long time before setting them down on paper. So he's one of those writers uh, uh, who remind us of the romantics. We're going to tell you the romantic literature again. My romantic, romantic poetry, but like a romantic literature uh, in general. Huh? Um, I have always liked to let things simmer in my mind. What is simmer? Well, okay, that is to say, uh, f uh, ferment or stay, uh, or uh, how would you say it? Uh, things that uh, uh, stay on his mind time so that uh, uh, the idea make of uh, the idea. Uh, how would I uh, find all um, participants here? Okay. Uh, okay. Nice meeting to meeting those Okay. Uh, so uh, if you if you go back to the, to the bottom and I gave it tariff now for what uh, number seven compare this to the most illustrious statement propagated by romantic writers poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. So he believes in that. He believes in the importance of taking some time as a writer to think of things. On the next page, uh, you find him comparing himself also to Chekhov, uh, the famous Russian dramatist at the end uh, uh, of and the beginning of, at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th centuries. Um, uh, OK. Uh, so this is line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The influence of Chekhov. He doesn't deny that he has been affected by the Chekhov. Well, Chekhov, Liman La Yalem, is the greatest, uh, perhaps the greatest uh, short story writer after uh, Edgar Allan Poe. But he is magnificent as a short story writer. Well, Somerset Mom is not convinced by uh, Chekhov. He, he, uh, all the time, he wants to be better, to ameliorate, uh, commit ameliorate, yes, and to do better and to improve on uh, uh, a, writer, a writer as great as uh, Chekhov. And, and then, uh, please keep silent. Please keep silent. Hello. <laughs> All right. At the bottom of the next page, page 11, and uh, starting with his, his, as I told you at the beginning of the uh, he is very uh, comic. He, uh, 
in his stories in general, okay. and it is our job to find examples of this in the uh, guide and in other short stories that we uh, the escape by the same writer, which also has some. Okay, so don't know. Thank you for uh, keeping silent. That was a disturbance, a disturbance. All right, I should have done mute to all. That I'm not like that. Mute all. And to get us a mini. Page 12. I do not know if I could ever have written stories in the Chekhov manner. I did not. I did not want to. I wanted to write stories that preceded. Look at this man and let me. أنا بتكلم من أول المحاضرة والمرة دي بقى هطلب إجابة عن السؤال. What is it that he is saying? بيقول. I didn't want to write like Chekhov. I wanted to write stories that preceded tightly knit in an unbroken line from the exposition to the conclusion. Min shatter or shatter to only, yani, what kind of writing is this? What kind of element is this among the elements? Single effect. Ayyu abrava leka sara bzaft. So this is the very definition, the very explanation of the single effect. You have one idea that you precede, that you present, and that. You uh, drive home from the very beginning in a very tightly knit manner, in a very structured, compact, tight manner, in an unbroken line. Nothing interrupts, nothing breaks uh, the flow of, of your argument from the exposition, from the very beginning of the work of art until the very end, which doesn't happen in uh, Chekhov. And then the things that we can take Chekhov, for example, he is a writer very much interested in objectivity of expression. He is very objective. He is very comic. He برضو يعني القصة اللي كانت فيها سينجر إفكت عالي جدا بس not in the way that Somerset Maugham prefers. So at the at the end of the paragraph, in short, I prefer to end my short stories with a full stop rather than with a struggle of dots. What does he mean by that? نقرأ الجملة اللي قبلها. It seemed to me that it was uh, reprehensible only if it was not logical, and I thought that the discredit that had been attached to it was due only to the fact that it had been too often tacked on merely for effect without legitimate reason. But then, preferring to end his stories with a full stop rather than with a struggle of ideas. So he preferred, but does he manage to do so? Be man. Uh, uh, the conclusion that uh, he gives us at the end of his story should be final and should be logical and should be convincing for everyone. Dalli usodu bi kilmet full stop. Ina ma kilmet dot semanha te ba open ended wa kena fi hin inno yana ma fish kate taban perfect wa bi ul ina ma mish aiz al conclusion sebtati te ba open ending la awa andu hagat kira gidan open ending zay fi dakait. Nruh li akhir al maqal bitaou. The French critic demands that a piece of fiction should have a beginning, a middle, and an end, a theme that is clearly developed to a logical conclusion, and that it should tell you uh, all that is of moment to the point at issue, or uh, of moment and of significance or importance. From the familiarity with uh, Maupassant, another French uh, uh, prose writer or novel and short story writer, uh, Guido Maupassant, that I gained at an early age, from my training as a dramatist, short stories, and long detailed descriptions, uh, uh, in being involved all the time in action. And perhaps وكذلك his own personal idiosyncrasy. An idiosyncratic person is uh, uh, the odd uh, idiosyncratic, a very odd, very strange man he is. 
uh, I have, it may be acquired a sense of form that is pleasing to the French. At all events, they find me neither sentimental nor verbose. يمكن هو ده الموتو بتاعه أو الشعار بتاعه إن لا يبقى زي زي ما بصوا لو أنا ما بصوا هتلاقي القصة بتاعته قريبة 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 الشبه جدا من موم إن لا فيها sentimentality ولا فيها verbose. حد هيقول لي طب ما إحنا الست اللي كانت إمبارح بتعيط على أي حاجة دي وكذلك جوزها ده sentimentality ولا لا؟ أقول لك في فرق ما بين the sentimentality of characters that belong to the age وإن الكاتب لازم يطلعهم على إن هما sentimental عشان يكشف لنا الـ age نفسه آه, تمام هو لازم يبقى honest ويطلع لنا إنه uh, these uh, characters are as sentimental as the age itself وما بين the sentimentality of the writer himself he is not sentimental ولا حاجة he is downright realistic and modernistic and uh, uh, quite vivid and uh, enlightening and enjoyable and appreciable as short story writers. Tamam? This is my introduction uh, to uh, Somerset Mom uh, for today. Uh, I want you to uh, read uh, the story, uh, which begins at a narrative innovation with psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis. Narrative innovation, modernism, Victorian mannerism, subtlety of language, and feminism. All of uh, you can find and you can encounter and you can appreciate uh, at the very beginning of the kite, uh, which I want you to read for next time. Get it, ma'am? If you have questions, for Dalum. You don't have questions? Lovely. Doctor, I have a question for you. Mm. The, when we said that the literature isn't just a mirror of the age, the mm. word that I didn't hear is very important. It is not only, I mean, it is not just a mirror of the age, but it is not only a mirror of the age, but writers of literature give, uh, show us the path, they show us the way, they guide us, they enlighten us, they help us to understand and to improve and to be better people and uh, to rediscover our worlds uh, and the world around us. So it's not just a mirror. A mirror, what does a mirror do? It just reflects reality as it is or as it can be. But this is not uh, actually the only function of literature. The function of literature also can be uh, and know, uh, to help us, as I have just said, uh, to be better readers, bet better people, uh, to find solutions to our problems. And the question is nice, I think, uh, since uh, you uh, got it from uh, yesterday's lecture and it, uh, it kept your mind busy. Thank you. Huh? دكتور معلش هو انا عايزه بس كلمه اللي هي احنا قلنا ان هو بيعكس صوت الضمير ما المصطلح نفسه ده اللي ما سمعتوش بس انا فهمتها امبارح يعني حلو ما هو اتس زي ما قلت مره ثانيه اتس نوت جاست ا ميرور اتس نوت جاست ا سوليد لايف ليس انانيمت ميرور تو سوسايتي بت ا تشوز يو اولسو ذا فويس اوف ويزدوم ويتش از ذا فويس اوف رايترز رايترز ار ذا بيكونز اوف سوسايتي مين انتوا بتاخدوا شعر مش كده ولا لسه الترم اللي جاي؟ لا الترم الثاني لا لسه الترم الثاني اسالوا بقى اللي هيدرس لكم شعر من الزملاء الافاضل على واحد اسمه بيرسي بي شالي احد الكتاب الرومانتكس اللي قال حاجه كده فوق العظمه عن الشعر وظيفه الشعر اللي هو الادب يعني بصفه عامه وات ديت هي سين شالي قال ايه بقى عن الشعر؟ بويتس ار ذا ان اكنولوجد legislators of the world uh, they are the prophets who are the unacknowledged uh, legislators of the world يعني هو بالنسبة له كشالي ككاتب رومانسي ككاتب انجليزي في القرن 19 شايف ان uh, uh, الادباء دول كالانبياء they understand بيشرعوا للعالم كله تخيلي بقى مش مجرد بقى ضمير ولا دين ولا اخلاق ولا كل ده مع بعضه الخلطة دي كلها مع بعضها is the function of um, uh, writers 
وانا في وانا بدرس روايه اولى جزء اساسي من الحاجات اللي بدرسها للطلبه وات از ذا فانكشن اوف ليتشر وات از ذا جوب اوف ليتشر ومن ضمنها الكلام ده تو تيتش تو ديلايت تو ليجيسليت تو جايد تو امبروف تو ميك يو خدنا ده في الحضاره تو ميك يو اس مور سنسيبل بيرسون a more civilized, more decent, more gentle person. Jamila, in Safa, I'll give you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. If you want, Doctor. If you want. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything. Huh? Yeah. The second page, ten. Ah, under your notebook, compare this notebook, number seven. Compares to the most illustrious statement group. Uh, so al poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility. What is right. the connection? Uh, the connection I have just explained already, but I didn't get him at a car. And I told the data stuff and then I have all I have always liked to let things simmer in my mind. Simmer in my mind. قريبه من الكلمه اللي باللغه العربيه اللي هي فيرمنت اللي هي موجوده هتلاقيها في الاقتباس بتاع تشارلوت برونتي حاجه و80 كده اللي احنا قراناها مع بعض المحاضره اللي فاتت او اللي قبلها رايت فهي از مور اوف رومانتيك رغم ان هو رغم ان هو مودرنست وفيكتوريان ممكن نقول عليه كمان رومانتيك والرومانتكس كانوا بيكتبوا ازاي بالشكل ده ايه تعريف الشعر عند الرومانسيين هو ده poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings بس الشرط بتاعها recollected in tranquility يعني هو he doesn't زي ده قايد كده بالظبط القايد اتكتبت ازاي يا ولاد؟ انه this is the story of a young man in prison uh, okay who refused to pay his divorced his divorcee divorced wife Uh, the money that the judge asks him to 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 pay uh, per week. Well, the 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 money is safe, and he doesn't want to pay. He's afraid that he's going to enter the prison instead of paying the limine, which is the limine of the debt. So, what's the reason that led him to make this statement? That he said that his wife smashed or destroyed or got rid of his kite. Okay. Do you understand? So this is the story that he listened to from uh, a friend. اسمه هنا في في بداية القصة أظن اسمه Ned Preston. فNed Preston ده is a social worker. ذي أخصائي اجتماعي. راح شاف الشاب ده وقعد معاه في السجن وقعد يقنعه والولد ده رأسه ألف سيف مش عايز يدفع الفلوس اللي طلقته. Uh, do you understand? So he, 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 he had an idea about that story a long time ago. And then he let the idea simmer in his mind. And then he began writing the story. In the same way that uh, romantic writers wrote poetry. They, um, And my heart leaps up when I behold the rainbow in the sky. Wordsworth. Uh, for often on the couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. How an absolute figure of Zabt in no, he saw the flowers of the river, and some long time passed with he thinking of those flowers and the daffodils and the river and greenery in general and nature. Uh, at large, and then there came a time in tranquility, that is to say, in peace of mind, when, when, let me be and tranquility, and Safa, Zehn, Akila, Yasalu, by contemplation or meditation, we tell about the Qasa, or 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 خلاص فينيشت اي هاف تو جو ناو طيب ها اتفضل السؤال حد هيسال دكتور حضرتك قلت كلمه بتساوي بيلد اون اند تيك اوفر كانت اسمها ايه بقى هو <تصفيق> انا يا بنت حافظ الكلام اللي انا بقوله ماشي <تصفيق> 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 ارجع الشريط ارجع ورا شويه 
اعملي ايه كان اولها اي ام ال اي حاجه كده اما انا تزعلش نفسك اعملي ريت تبقى ورايا اي ام يا دكتور شكرا اي ام اي ال اميليو اي ام اي ال اي او ار اي تي اي تمام شكرا يا دكتور اي سؤال تاني معلش في سؤال كمان يا دكتور من فضلك ماشي حضرتك لما كانت ناين عن الكتاب الامريكان ايوه لا ما صفحه ناين مش امريكان رايت لحظه بس ايوه صفحه ناين فيها هازلت ايوه فيها نيومان وانا ضفت عليهم كارلايل دولت مش امريكان دولت بريتش والله طيب اه والله العظيم هاتك يا <تصفيق> حضرتك قلت he does not encourage others to imitate them he doesn't encourage other writers ولا encourage نفسه to imitate British writers يعني شايف أيوة. انهم traditional and conventional enough انما هو بيدعو الناس انها تقلد الاسلوب الامريكي which is more vivid, more graphic, more subtle يناسب السنجل effect ويناسب الاسلوب بتاعه في الكتابة طيب شكرا طب العفو ها خلاص اوكي سي يو نيكست ويك ان شاء الله السلام عليكم